So, I think this is a very relevant topic to talk about, and uh, you can hopefully take this into your, your, your own account while you're thinking about the issues of the day, because this is always going to be relevant. Uh, freedom, what is it? Why is it important? Why, like, what was the, what's the point? What's the point of freedom, being free? Uh, what even is it? You know, there's a lot of, uh, pretty much every ideology will tout itself on being the best for freedom. Uh, and I'm going to discuss in more depth why is freedom important. So why am I having this discussion? Well, uh, about a year ago, I was having an argument with a tanky, a Marxist, Leninist, Maoist type of guy. And uh, he brought up, uh, why, why is freedom important? You know, I was arguing uh, against him, his ideology, saying, oh, it limits people's freedom. It's bad because of that. And then he said, well, I think freedom is a, is not that important. Like, what? Why do you think freedom is that is is such a big deal? And that kind of stumped me because I never questioned it. Most people don't ever question it. It's kind of just a, a something that's so ingrained in in culture it, that that you should always be going for freedom. Freedom is such a great thing. So why do I believe that freedom is so good? What what is it that freedom offers that that is so important to me uh, and so many other people? And during that argument, when I was trying to think of an answer on the spot, my my uh, my 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 conclusion was that freedom is something basic that it matters because of itself. That it's something that is so innate to being a human, being able to prosper and survive. That 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 it matters because it it is freedom. That's why it has value. Freedom has value because of because because just because it does it's something so basic it's like what it's like asking why do atoms exist atoms exist because they do why does one plus one equal two because that's just how the world works freedom is important because it's freedom it's something so basic that it does it, it all other questions devolve down to a question of freedom uh, and that was the argument i gave while i was having this this debate with, with the tanky but I, I i sort of think that's a little inadequate you know that doesn't really do enough to 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 make me confident in my answer. So I've been thinking about it ever since then, and I think I've got a pretty decent idea of why freedom is actually important. To have a good philosophical base to build the rest of uh, of your your ideas on the world on, and I will put it like this: freedom is a solu is a solution to a problem. The problem is that human that th humans are insanely complex. The human mind, the human brain, I mean. The physical object of the human brain is the most complex object that we know about in the universe. Uh, when you include the rest of the human body, uh, it's just such a complicated system. Uh, it's incredibly diverse, and not just in the, the liberal sense of our diversity is our strength. It's so diverse that you cannot possibly make a system that encompasses for everyone's needs. Uh, there are so many factors that can change the needs and wants of a person. Uh, biological, uh, like literally genetic, physical changes in the way your brain physically looks to uh, develop, like early development, the way the culture you're brought up in, uh, the way your parents raised you, the, the school you went to, uh, the ideas you were exposed to. There are so, like, it's impossible to even calculate for every single possibility that could influence a human being that and that is a problem because when you try and build a society which is a lot of human beings living in close proximity sharing the same resources sharing the same space uh, you cannot possibly account for the huge range of diversity within human minds uh, so if you want to have society you have to have some solution to the problem that uh, everyone's needs are going to be uh, so varying that there are going to be conflicts. You can't possibly build a so if you if you try and build a society that advantages a certain group, it's going to necessarily disadvantage another group. Uh, and, you know, the, the typical groups tend to be the mentally ill, tend to be like probably the most universally disadvantaged group. Anyone with schizophrenia or something is such an outlier that we have declared that we can't even possibly make a society that caters to them because uh, that would make society so bad for the rest of us that it must be that they are mentally ill. They are so separated from the rest of humanity that they, they can't even be given a position with the rest of us. They are 
uh, they have an illness. That is that is the problem. That is the society problem. Uh, the diversity of human uh, minds and behaviors problem. And the solution to that problem is freedom. As in, instead of trying to design a system that that allows uh, everyone to to be optimal, because that system is so di like impossible to account for everyone, you just have to give everyone the freedom to basically uh, create their own system, do what they want. Because otherwise, that's the best way to allow a huge uh, diversity of ways of thinking, of cultural backgrounds, all these this stuff, to uh, live their lives. To to uh, like pragmatically make a world that works that doesn't just collapse in on itself. The the only way to do that is by giving people the ability to decide for themselves. Because if someone else tries to decide for them, there are going to be people they can't account for, and that is going to create tensions. And the more people they can't account for, the more tensions it's going to create. So the solution to that problem is freedom, the ability to do what you want, essentially. But uh. Freedom is freedom is such a strange concept. It's it's so nebulous. You know, you say freedom as a vague thing. Uh, so I want to talk about that. There are various types of freedom. Um, the freedom is not some singular concept. Freedom is a umbrella term for a lot of things, uh, which is why almost every ideology you come across can tout itself as being the best for freedom because they they all are really good for their own specific type of freedom. Uh, for example, neoliberalism. Generally, we don't think of that as a particularly freedom-focused ideology, but neoliberalism has a couple of really good freedoms that it does. It's really good for freedom to consume whatever you want to consume, essentially, as long as you have enough money. Uh, you, you are able to consume endlessly and there is basically no limit on how much you are encouraged to consume and what you're encouraged, encouraged to assume. There are some limitations, but it is pretty good at that. And the, probably the best freedom that neoliberalism offers is the freedom to not care. The, the freedom to simply ignore various things. You are completely free to ignore social injustice or to ignore uh, the problems of those who are lower on the societal hierarchy than you or the problems that are being put onto you by those higher in the societal hierarchy. Uh, you have the freedom to simply uh, refuse to engage in any of that and it's a very broad freedom and a lot of people take it up on on the, its offer. Take neoliberalism up on the offer that yes, you know what, I will use this freedom that I have to simply not care about this. Uh, and uh, that is a freedom that is actually quite important. Uh, as uh, uh, You know, being critical of neoliberalism is very fashionable and very good in general. It's a good thing to be critical of, but there, it does. That is one thing that it it, it has a merit. Uh, for example, I don't really. There are certain things I don't want to have to think about. I don't really want to have to think about uh, the way my dishwasher works. Uh, kind of boring. I don't really want to have to think about um, learning how to intricately fix uh, my plumbing system. Right? Just not really interesting to me. Don't really want to have to think about it. So, fortunately, I can pay someone else to think about it for me and fix that. Or, even more so, I don't really want to have to think about, um, you know, various, like, day-to-day -day necessities that I would have to think about in, say, an anarcho-syndicalist direct democracy. Like, do I really want to have to vote on every single societal issue? Uh, or not even have to, but feel obligated to? Uh, kind of taking away that option for me, taking away the option that... Uh, I could be doing something about this, is a type of freedom. It frees me up to not have to care. Uh, so, like, something pretty inane, something about the distribution of resources in some sort of anarcho-syndicalist uh, world. Uh, how are we going to divide up this land amongst the people? Uh, and this is something that would not be relevant to me. So, something that is not, like, directly affecting me. Uh, do I really want to have to go to a forum and discuss and debate and vote on this this how we're going to divide this cattle farm no i don't i don't want to do that i don't want to have to think about that and even having the option to go to that forum is taking away my freedom to not have that option my my freedom to never have cared about that uh, that is a type of freedom that neoliberalism is really good at uh, now 
is that true freedom? Is that actually a freedom or is that a, a boundary? Is that, is that like, that's the question. This is why freedom itself is such a weird thing to even talk about because is that, does it make you free to not have to care about certain things? Is that a freedom or is that an obstruction? Uh, so then we have to define what is freedom antithetical to? What is the opposite of freedom? And, you know, the standard that you might typically think freedom is the opposite of oppression or tyranny. Uh, however, I think there is a more a poignant answer which gets to the, the base, 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 base of the issue. And that is freedom is the opposite of violence because tyranny and oppression require violence to sustain themselves. Uh, violence and or the threat of violence. Uh, the, uh, that should be self-evident. Uh, you, 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 the, that is the way tyranny is enforced. Uh, so, freedom is the, the way that you negate violence. Uh, you don't have to be violent against someone if you're allowing them to simply do what they want. You can't violently enforce the freedom to do what you want. That doesn't, it's not possible. You can violently enforce most other things, but you can't violently enforce freedom. Uh, so that is why freedom is important, because most people, I believe, can can, can pretty much side on the uh, when violence is directed at me, I don't like it. That's that's probably something that most people can agree on. They don't like it when violence is directed at them, and that is why they tend towards freedom because it allows you to negate violence if you're free. You can't have vi if you are a free person. No one can be violent against you, uh, because violence is limiting options. Um, when that that is a definition of violence, the definition of violence uh, that the dictionary gives is is kind of uh, inadequate. Most most people who know what they're talking about uh, say violence is 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 essentially the opposite of freedom. I, I don't know if they say it exactly in that way, but a, a violent action is something that removes someone's options. So if I am if I attack you in the street, you no longer have any options other than run def or defend yourself. If I uh, lock you in jail or kidnap you, uh, you no longer have the freedom to go outside to be wherever you want. Uh, you know, if I uh, spread rumors about you, uh, you no longer have the freedom to be seen how you want to be seen in the public eye. Uh, so therefore, freedom is the antithesis of violence. Freedom is the opposite of violence. And that's why freedom is worth caring about. Uh, but again, as I said, there are many different types of freedom, like the neoliberal freedom I was just talking about, the freedom to consume, or the freedom to oppress others. That's a type of freedom. Uh, th this is uh, this is the uh, the uh, the other answer, the kind of shitty answer to the the society problem. The society problem, remember that e that everyone is so different from each other that trying to build a world that accounts for everyone is necessarily going to leave some people out. Now, people, and you know, even even most anarchists or socialists, uh, you know, th th in a sense, that's what an ideology is. It's deciding which freedoms you care most about, uh, and which freedoms you're willing to sort of say that doesn't really matter. Like a socialist would probably say the freedom to consume whatever Marvel movie you want to consume is not such an important freedom, uh, but the freedom to for the workers to self. Uh, to democratically own their own workplace, that's an important freedom. Whereas a uh, a, a an ethno nationalist might say uh, the freedom to uh, I don't know they they might say some bullshit like oh the freedom to so our uh, own nation, but what they really mean is the freedom to uh, fuck fuck those other people. The freedom to oppress other people is an important freedom for me because in a sense. That is a type of that is a freedom. That is an option you have. If, if a freedom is is something that you have the option to do, uh, then the having the option to be violent against someone is a type of option. So uh, th that's just them. That's their other answer to the society problem. Is well, if societies have to have some group of people that uh, they disadvantage in order to function. Uh, uh, then clearly we just have to make sure that group isn't me. That's that's their solution to the problem, and I find that solution pretty unsatisfactory because uh, you you can't be sure. You know, it's that very that very over quoted poem. First they came for the socialists, and I didn't speak up because I'm not a socialist. And then they came for the blur. Yeah, that one. Uh, everyone knows it. It's that it's it's basically that problem that you think you're 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 on the winning side until you're not. 
uh, and that's that's the problem with tyranny uh, from a from from a uh, individual individualistic angle. You know, I see a lot of moralists moralist reasons for why freedom is good. Freedom is good because it's the moral thing to do, and that's you know you can you're allowed to think like that. You know, you that is that's an avenue you could go down. But I personally like to think of it from a more pragmatic standpoint that. Freedom is the most efficient way to organize the world. That it, it just allows people, it allows for the incredibly, ridiculously uh, weird number of ways <laughs> that a human brain can be. And the more free a world is, the more weird ways we're allowing for people to exist. Uh, so, th that's this is just a base. This is a very, very base. You can then decide, now that you know what freedom means and why it's important, you can then use that to build the rest of your personal uh, self-theory on. So now we know why, why freedom is good, and now we know that there are many different types of freedom, which freedoms do I really care about? Personally, I really care about stuff like the freedom freedom to organize, freedom of movement, or, or freedom to uh, make whatever art you want to make, or consume whatever art you want to consume. That is that is a type of freedom I really care about. Or uh, freedom to... Remember, there are negative freedoms as well. Uh, freedom to not have something happen to you. One of my negative freedoms I care about a lot is privacy. Freedom, privacy is the freedom to not be watched. That's a great negative freedom. Uh, and there are some freedoms I don't really care about, like what I was talking about before. Do I really care about the freedom to consume the next Marvel movie? Not really. That could, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy to not have that freedom. Uh, you can take that away from me. I won't really care. Do I care about the freedom to oppress minorities? don't really don't really want to do that i don't really <laughs> i don't really want that freedom you can have that freedom you can take that away from me i'm happy i'm happy to not have that freedom uh so there are certain freedoms that uh that that you might base your ideology on uh but remember the ideological supermarket just like every other supermarket is fit only for looting you should you should see the sea of ideologies as something to swim through it's not something to own. It's not a part of your identity. Uh, you you are not. This is this is why one of the reasons. This is I'm kind of going off topic here, so I will I will end the video with this. A help, helpful tip for navigating the supermarket of ideology. Uh, don't find a book, read the book, and say uh, this is my ideology. Uh, find a bunch of books or songs or movies or plays or um friends talk to them think i like this bit and then add it to your your, your verbal shopping list add it to your self shopping list in the supermarket of ideology don't don't so don't go pick up a, a pack a cereal box of leninism and just put it in your basket to pick up the cereal box of leninism open it up Find the, the little one colour of cereal that you like, take out all the that colour, put them in your your, your, your your shopping cart, close the box up, and then set it on fire, and then go to the next aisle and do the same with every single cereal box you find. And then once you've got them all in your cart, this is what you, this is the bit that's called critical self theory, is you then you look at all the bits of cereal and all the different colours you've taken from all the different ideological cereal boxes, you look at them and then you, you just look at them really closely and, and importantly, you, you get in different angles. You look at them in different angles than you looked at them before. You, you, you try and get underneath it. You get a microphone and zoom, microphone, microscope and zoom in. You, you step, take a step back and look at the shape they all make. And then you go, you know, this, this, this bluey green one kind of doesn't fit with this reddish orange one. Like the flavors kind of contradict each other. And in fact, I'm not even sure that bluey green one is has much merit. So let me get rid of that bluey green one. Or, you know, this this purple one would actually go really well with the pink one that I saw over there, but I didn't take. So let me go back over there and take that pink one that I really liked and add it to my collection. But the the box that pink one comes in, that also has these, these nasty lime green ones. I really hate those lime green ones. So I'm just going to ignore the lime green ones. Uh, but I can take the pink ones as much as I like and add them to my shopping cart and then you walk out without paying 
And that's how you should treat the sea of ideologies, the, the supermarket of ideologies. It's not pick up a cereal box you like and just take that with you and, and then pay for it. It's, it's, it's not that. It's fit only for looting. Thank you for coming to my video. <laughs>